Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Joy of Puzzles. Today I have for you the first in a new collection. This is the Disney Castle Collection. This particular one is Ariel's Palace. It was published in 2020 by Ravensburger. Now, Ravensburger was established back in 1883 and they were originally founded in Germany. They didn't release their first board game until 1884 and then for the next three generations they just focused on educational publications and games. In the 60s, they produced their first jigsaw puzzle, and they are currently a $60 million company with over 2,000 employees around the world, though most of those folks are in Europe. Um, while they don't have the largest puzzle ever made commercially available, they do offer two of them that have over 40,000 pieces, and both are Disney-themed. They measure 22 and a half feet by 6 and a half feet, and um, are way bigger than the space I have to build. I do now own what is touted as the largest puzzle made by Kodak. Um, I'll start that project soon. Alright, anyways. No specific artist is given for this image. Uh, it is part of the Disney Studios, so the credit goes to someone or a team of someone's, you know, within that organization. This is the Disney Castle Collection, and it is a series of 10 puzzles celebrating the various beloved heroines of Disney. Ariel's Palace is number 8 in the series, and I do own several more of them. I don't think I have all 10 yet. The back of the puzzle box actually shows kind of a sectional view of what the palace would look like, and I kind of wish that was the front image. Um, it's a little more detailed and interesting, but, uh, you know, whatever. It's still a nice puzzle. Alright, strategy. How the heck do you approach this kind of puzzle? Well, I haven't built the Ravensburger in, in a bit of time, and historically when I have a monochrome border, I tend not to build those first, especially with the Ravensburger. Historically I found that the pieces are very similar, and it kind of is a waste of time. You end up struggling with it and go back to it at the end to straighten it all out. Well, I figured, well, I'll give it a shot. And it actually worked out. The things have changed there, I guess. So this 2020 puzzle, the pieces were a little more, I don't know, better designed so that they all fit together and I didn't really struggle with it, so I did build the border first. They do tout some new technology, the soft click technology. This is a premium puzzle, so perhaps things have changed. Alright, so what do you do after that? That transition between the golden palace and the blue background is the obvious starting point. I treat this like I would a photograph, where I have a clear delineation between, say, the sky and the primary structures. So same thing here. I first look for those pieces that contain both blue and the gold color, and then at the bottom it's the dark blue. And that boundary that you end up creating is it helps you section off the puzzle and, and approach it in a, in a logical manner. So what do you do after that? Well, the rest of the golden stuff, right? And the, and the blue surface underneath. And then from there, well, there's an aura about the castle. A much lighter shade, I mean, you know, a lighter hue of blue and it kind of blossoms out of there. So I built all those pieces next. It's kind of like a, a halo or a, like I said, a glow around the castle. But by the end, that last hundred pieces is the dreaded hunt and peck method. Good grief. Sort the pieces by shape is my strategy there. Look for key indicators of the missing pieces and start filling in gaps, literally plugging each piece. Not fun, the last bits, but it's okay, right? The rest of the puzzle was good and all right. Let's talk about the review. I'm going to review this puzzle in four different categories on a scale of one to five. This is a, uh, you know, a Ravensburger. Historically, I have given a lot of threes to this brand name, uh, but I found in this case to be a step up. So in the first category, the puzzle material quality, I'm giving it a four. 
the pieces were a little more rigid than they have been historically. I didn't have, I didn't feel like any of the tabs were going to bend. And they eliminated the dust. The dust has been the biggest pet peeve, and it's gone. I didn't have any with this puzzle. It made me very happy. So gladly give this Ravensburger a four. And I hope the others in this series warrant the same rating. The next category is the puzzle cut quality and design. And here too, I found that this particular puzzle was a step above my historic experience with Ravensburger, and I'm going to also give this a four. The border went together basically in one shot. I didn't have to second guess or feel that I had misplaced pieces, so the design is really good. The cut quality was crisp. Um, even in places where I had to hunt and peck, I didn't feel like I was putting pieces in the wrong spot. So, a step up. I'm happy. It's a four as well. Difficulty. Well, this is a thousand piece puzzle. And my normal grade is eight hours for a thousand piece puzzle. Well, this took nine and a half. So, I'm going to give this difficulty a four as well. At the last probably two hours, I had to do it in two sessions, because an hour is about my burnout point for hunting and pecking methodology, is just dedicated to the dark blue on the outside. Um, so, you know, that brought me to nine and a half hours, so I think it warrants a, a, a score of four. The final category, and the most subjective of all of them, frameability. If I was the type of person that built a puzzle once, saved it forever, hung it somewhere, and wanted to tell people about it, would this make the list? And it's a probably. This is a four for me. This is a grade above a lot of what these puzzles are. I find the reimagined images, the, the, the going at the heroines, palaces, and, and creating this new art out of them. I think it's very nice. I could see, you know, as a, as a Disney fan myself, and my wife is as well, this actually would be something that in the right place, I could see this hanging on the wall, and if I had all ten, there's something to be said for having the complete collection someplace together where you could thumb through it and look at it. So anyways, for me, again, purely subjective. This is a cut above. I would I would rank this as a four. The image quality and, uh, you know, the artwork being what it is. And again, the, just the idea of reimagining these iconic images from all these animated films. All right, moving on. Overall score, well, it's all fours. So guess what? This is a four as well. This is definitely a great puzzle. Um, I don't normally do this, but I would say if you're looking for a little bit of a challenge, this is one to buy. Uh, the quality being above average, the cut quality being above average, the image being very nice. Just a little bit of a grind at the end here. So <laughs> as we get to that, we see in the footage, in the boxes, you see I have sorted all the pieces by their particular geometry. And then I look for hints and clues on the remaining pieces, and I literally take a piece and work it around to the obvious spots. Now the other pro tip is that when you've tried a piece several times, when you put it back in your box, change the orientation of the piece so that when you're looking you know, oh I tested all of these, this is where I left off, and I haven't tested these remaining. Because otherwise, if you're haphazard about it, you actually end up using the same piece several times and trying it several times even though it doesn't go there. So anyways, a little, little bit of a tip. Think about your strategy when you're doing it this way. All right. That's it, everyone. I appreciate everyone that takes 10 minutes out of a day to watch one of these videos. If you liked it, go ahead and click the like button, maybe even the subscribe button, and I look forward to bringing you more puzzles, especially this brand and this group, in the very near future. Thanks again, everyone, and I will talk to you soon.